Uh, I want to do an experiment. Fortunately, symmetry doesn't care about the angles. It, it, it cares that you can, you can do rotations and things. It doesn't care the, about the value of the angle. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. So I'm going to start with a triangle that I'll call it a reference triangle. And I'll imagine I've glued it down on, on a, maybe a table or something. And I've given it what I call axes, one, two. By the way, I threw that in to see if you were awake. I obviously wasn't when I made that transparency. So here's my reference triangle and uh, axes one, two, and three. And here's a re action triangle. And I'm going to overlay the action triangle on top of the reference triangle. So the A's, B's, C's, Roman numeral ones, twos, and threes, those are just things that we humans put in so we can sort of see what we're doing. It's very important to realize that. Coordinate systems, labels, those are things coming from the human brain that are added to a, a, a system to try to figure out what, what's going on. We're really interested in the heart of the matter, the stuff that doesn't depend so much on those labels and, and axes. So here's the question. If I have one equilateral triangle overlaying another equilateral triangle, how many ways can I pick up the overlay triangle, the action triangle, and put it back down on top of the reference triangle? How many distinct ways can I do that? Okay? And you have to be careful with that because we don't care so much about you know, the path that we took when we pick it up and put it back down, whether I, I go 10 feet or, or just a few inches in doing it. And I don't care if I, in fact, run out that door and come back in that one with a new position. I, I just care about how many equivalent mappings are there from one overlay position to another. All right? Does anybody already have an idea? Well, let's do it. Let's, we can do it. this. We can do an experiment. Well, first of all, we could rotate through uh, 120 degrees. This is this is a real 120 degree rotation. I'm going to rotate about the center through one third of 360 degrees, through one third of two pi. That will bring. They'll bring the vertex A down here, vertex B ends up over here, the vertex C ends up over there. That's a symmetry operation. So I don't care how you do it. You could pick the triangle up, <coughs> run around that, those posts 30 times, come back and put it back down. The point is there's one and only one mapping of the triangle from the initial position to the new position, which we call this rotation to 120 degrees. Let's hit the reset button. Go back to where we started. What else could we do? We could reflect it like we did with the Taj Mahal about axis one. So what have I done now? I've said there's an axis here, and I'm going to take every point to the left of the axis and map it into an equivalent point on the right, and vice versa. Well, that keeps A where it was, but it switches B and C. And so I'm going to end up with B was here, when we go around clockwise, A, B, C. Now C is here, and B is here, and vice versa. What else can I do? Hit the reset button. Got two of them. How many more are there? What else can I do? Reflect about axis two. Boy, you read my mind. If I take axis two, I now reflect about that axis. It means I map every point on this side of the axis into an equivalent point on that, and vice versa. And you see B and A are now uh, interchanged, but C is the same. Reset. Well, obviously now I can do a reflection about axis 3, and that will interchange A and C, but it'll hold B fixed. Or we can rotate through 240 degrees, and that, uh, that will rotate A all the way around to here, B rotated to here, C Anything else? Is there anything else? Well, what if I did uh, a rotation through 480 degrees? Hit the reset button and rotate this thing through first 360 and then 120. What do I get? Well, a will go all the way around, and then it'll end up here. And B will go all the way around, and then it'll end up here, and C will end up here. Is that a new symmetry operation? I 
think so. You're sort of you're shaking your head in the right direction. Why is that not a new symmetry operation? Because you actually done it before when you only rotated one like 120 degrees. Exactly. It's the same operation as the rotation through 120. So if we were to count it, it's more like a, like what path did you take? Today I don't care about the paths. There's a branch of mathematics that cares a lot about the paths called homotopy, and, and uh, homology is another related field, where you care about whether paths can wrap around posts ten times or eight times or nine times or whatever, and whether they can be shrunk to a trivial point or not. We don't care about that today. Uh, as a homework problem to see what's involved, you might think about paths that live on the surface of a sphere. So here's a sphere, and a path starts here, and it goes out and comes back. And that path can be shrunk back to a point, always. You think of this path as kind of like a rubber band with this perfectly shrinkable material. You can just shrink wrap that, point, that thing down to a point. Question, are all paths on a sphere shrinkable to a point? Well, yeah, they are. Remember where I put the, the starting point, can go around the equator, I can just come up over the North Pole and shrink it. But here's a problem. Here's a donut. Are all paths shrinkable to a point on a donut? So now you see you have paths that are trivial, that guy, that can shrink to a point. But you also have a point, a, a path that goes like that loops once around the donut through the hole. And that path cannot be shrunk to a point. And in fact, if I have a path that goes n times, and then back, n times looping around through the hole, that cannot be shrunk to a path that loops m times if n does not equal m. So all paths on a donut can be labeled by an integer n that runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. Counts the different ways in which you can wrap. Is that the whole story? No. Because there are paths on a donut that can wrap around like that, like the white wall on a tire. And I can go 10 times around the white wall, or minus 5 times. So all paths on a donut are labeled by two integers the through the hole integer and the white wall integer. So the, if you take the Cartesian product of the set of all integers in itself, you have what are called the winding numbers or the topological indices of the donut. Whereas for a sphere, it's just the null set. That's the difference between a sphere and a donut. So, Work this out for a double donut. Count how many different classes of paths there are in a double donut. There's a homotopy. Okay. That's called homotopy. It's very fascinating something. Because it's a way of saying something like the global shape of something. It's just the opposite of calculus, where you try to zo zoom in on the short distance part and say what's happening differentially in short distances. This is a statement about what's happening at very large distances, and, and maybe our universe is a double donut and not a sphere. That's a physics question. But that has nothing to do with this. And that's why we don't care about a rotation through 480 degrees compared to 120 degrees. And that's more a question about the path. So like I said, I could pick the the reference triangle up, uh, the, the, the action triangle up, and run around the post there 10 times and come back and put it down. That would have a winding number of 10 units around the post, homotopically. But it doesn't say anything about the equilateral triangle. It's more a statement about the universe that 